Welcome to Ask Dr. B About Music Theory. I have a question from Subhan Hafiz. Subhan writes, Nice, I might not be fluent in scales, but I sure do know my chords and triads. But is raising the fifth note the only way to make an augmented chord? What if we raise the third? I always thought C A G was some form of augmented C. Anyways, thanks for the awesome lesson. All right, so let's answer these questions. So first off, is raising the fifth the only way to get to an augmented chord? Well, that has an if. So if you are going from a major triad, meaning one, three, five, of the scale of a major scale, and you say, well, how would I go from a major triad, one, three, five, the first, third, and fifth note of the major scale, to an augmented triad by taking those same pitches. The yes, and then in that case, the answer is yes. That is the only way to go to an augmented triad from a major triad. And again, the, the key for the formula is from what to what. So from this, apply formula, you then get to this. So if I take the first note of a major scale, the third note of a major scale, and raise the fifth note of a major scale, I will get an augmented triad. And that's the only way to do it. There is no other formula that will give you the right pitches. So when you then say, well, what, what if I raise the third instead? Uh, or maybe in addition, but maybe instead. But certainly what that would mean is if you raise the third, that it would be C, E sharp, and G. This is not an augmented triad. This is not an augmented triad in inversion either. Uh, and we're going to talk about inversion in a second because that is definitely something interesting when we get to augmented triads. But C, E, our major triad, that's a major triad. If I raise the fifth note, that is an augmented triad. If I go C, E sharp, G, that is not an augmented triad. What it actually sounds like, and, and it doesn't look like this, and harmonically that would be an F, so C, F, G is like a sus harmony. It's like a 4-3 suspension where, where it's going to go from the F maybe down to the E to create a major triad. That's what that looks like. And the other part of your question is, well, is C, A, G some kind of augmented triad? The answer is no, it's not. Um, if I were to, this is an incomplete chord. Um, if I were to say, what is it closest to? I would say that A is the root because it's the only one that it can stack thirds to get up to a G. So I could go A, C, E, G. And one, three, omit the fifth, which is very, very common to omit the fifth, seven. So I would call that an A minor seven chord, omitting the fifth in first inversion if, if, if that C is actually functioning as your lowest note. So being clear on what your formula is to get to create different triads, there's other ways you can find out what they are. Um, so where does an augmented triad, in what kind of key does an augmented triad occur? Well, it occurs in, in a minor key especially if you're using harmonic minor. Straight up C harmonic minor would be C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B natural, C. And if I take the third scale degree of that C harmonic minor scale, and then I take the fifth note and the seventh note. So one, I'm sorry, three, five, seven, and I'm going to put a, a natural next to that B because it it is going to be it's going to have a flat in the key signature. So the C harmonic minor. If we are in a C minor, it's going to have three flats in there in our key signature, and so that natural will be required for the B. But the three chord based off of harmonic minor would be an augmented triad. So three augmented 
is the diatonic triad from the harmonic minor. Now, you might say, Dr. B, how come you haven't talked about that that much before in any of your lessons? Well, it's, I, I talk about it briefly, and, and the answer is that harmonic minor isn't, minor is a very complicated type of key in the sense that it's not just using the notes of the harmonic minor scale. It's not just using the notes of the natural minor. It's not just using the notes in the melodic minor. It really uses all three scales in different situations. So in the situation of making a three chord in tonal music, you do not use the harmonic minor scale. You use a natural minor scale. So overwhelmingly composers have used the three chord in minor as a major triad. It's a major triad. It's not an augmented triad. So you could say, oh, but that's what it would be from the harmonic minor scale. And I'll say that's true. You can use that if that works for you, but that's not the way composers did it. So there's, there's more than one way to get to the right answer. In music theory, what's, what's particularly interesting and what actually makes it so rich is that there's many different ways that you can come to, the, to an answer. And understanding all those different ways can be very helpful when you're composing or arranging something or analyzing to see all the different perspectives, to really see a, a particular idea from all sides. Now, what I did want to get back to is this idea of inversion when we come to an augmented triad. So, I mentioned right here, we might have as an augmented triad C, E, G sharp. And in this case, we would identify C as the root of that augmented triad. Why? Well, because we're dealing with what's called tertial harmony in Western music all the way, all the way up. What we're dealing with is tertial chords that are built by stacking thirds. So C to E is a major third. Not a fourth, not a fifth, not a sixth, not a seventh, a third. And then E to G sharp is also a third. It happens to be another major third. That's what I mean by tertial harmony. We're stacking thirds. So we put one third and then we put another third on top of that. Is it a major third? Is it a minor third? That'll change and give us our different triad types, but they will be stacked thirds. Now, watch this, okay? So let's say instead I would like to build a E augmented triad. So I go E, G sharp, B sharp. And before I, I follow up on that, this is another way other than this formula, one, three, raise the fifth, is to say this is probably a very common method that you should know. Um, to build an augmented triad, take a pitch, put a major third on top of that, put a mo another major third on top of that. Another way to say it, because again, what, what I love about you, you all, my viewers, asking me questions is it allows me to give you every side, every angle. When I first present something, I try to pick what I think is the most easy, efficient method to use. But there's more than one method. And sometimes, some methods work better for some people than other methods. It doesn't, it's not necessarily that there's only one right way. So, make it, how to make an augmented triad. Sure, you can use my method of take a major scale, one, three, raised fifth. You can also say, take a pitch, put a major third, and another major third on top of that. You can also say, I want to take a major third on top of my starting note, and then an augmented fifth on top of that. So by this, you're really using the interval, you're using your intervals to make up and spell your augmented triad. For some people, that might be a lot easier. So let me say it one more time. To make an augmented triad, take a starting note, make that your root, put a major third on top of that, then another major third on top of that note you just added. Or pick a note, make it your root, Put a major third on top of that, and then based on your same note that you originally picked, put an augmented fifth on top of that. So let's jump back here 
when I was talking about, well, what if we went E, G sharp, B sharp? Because there we have our major third. E to G sharp is a major third. E to B sharp is an augmented fifth. So that is an augmented triad. Now, if we compare our C augmented triad with our E augmented triad, do you notice anything interesting? Well, let's use our ears because even though we're doing music theory and using our, our brains, we want to connect it to what it sounds like. Keep in mind, theory came second. People used their ears to fig figure out what sounds good and what works. And then they said, well, what's the, the principle that unites all these things that I'm hearing that sound good? And that's music theory. Music theory is really good to use when your ear, when you get stuck using your ear, music theory comes into play. That's where the craftsmanship of music comes in. So, let's listen. There's our C augmented triad. And then E augmented. Well, I hope you hear and notice that the C here and the B-sharp are enharmonically the same pitch. So, if I don't spell it out for you, you don't know if my chord is C, E, G-sharp, or B-sharp, E, G-sharp. So, in other words, is this a C augmented triad in root position, or is this an E augmented triad in second inversion. By listening, they sound exactly the same. The only way you could tell is by the context of the music going on around it, or if I spelled it out for you. So the interesting thing about inversions of augmented triads is because major third, major third, major third, and then the leap between the top note of your, your, uh, of your augmented triad so G sharp to C is a diminished fourth, which is enharmonically the same as a major third. So it's a very symmetrical triad, and it allows for some interesting things when we come to dealing with inversions. So when I get that question, uh, these are all the things that I, I kind of run through in my mind to try to answer the question and give you a, a a more complete picture of what's involved with an augmented triad.